good evening no uh, i'm going to start again our second part of our lecture no and the last time uh class no i was able to discuss with you yung si sir robert torrens no siya yung uh, register of deeds in australia na naging member of the parliament at naipasa yung batas at kaya nga tinawag na torrens system of land registration now I have started discussing to you ano yung mga protection or mga benefits kapag titulado a property mo under the torrent system of land registration, right? So, maganda yung na-discuss natin. Ngayon, ipagpatuloy po natin ngayon, ano pa yung ibang mga protection na nakita ko sa batas natin na baka pagprotekta kapag titulado nga ang property ninyo. Alright, so we are going to discuss also the second part itong Land Registration Authority and the Register of Deeds. No? I, I have time, or if not, I'm going to discuss the Charter of the Land Registration Authority kasi nandoon kasi nakasagad kung gailan katagal nila gagawin yung mga pinapaprocess natin sa kanila. No? And are they covered by the Anti-Red Tape Act? Are they exempted from it? Kaya po ang title natin lumalabas ng 5 months, 6 months, 7 months, 8 months? Or are they covered with the Anti-Red Tape Act wherein it should only be uh, for simple transactions, it should be 3 days, 7 days for complex transaction, and highly technical po na transaction is only for 20 days. Working days po yan lahat. So, yan lang po dapat ang period within which kung mag-process sila nung ating in-apply as a client sa kanila for processing. Okay. So, we will start with the protection muna. No? Ipagpatuloy natin yung protection natin kapag titulado po ang ating lupa. Okay. Now, what other protections no? that a registered owner of a land may have under the Torrance title system. Of course, Civil Code of the Philippines po, marami po tayong protection dyan, no? Uh, for example, the law on lease, no? Uh, it protects the the owner of the property uh, that uh, as the owner himself he has that proof that he could lease the property to the exclusion of other persons, no? Kasi under the principle of... Uh, the bundle of rights, no? Yung jus possidende, jus gutende, the right to the right to use, the enter, the right to receive the fruits, no? Jus uh, pruende, yun po ang tawag, no? Um, Attorney, I'm sorry. Hello? Okay, I said okay. Then unmute ako. Yes, yes, ako po nag-unmute. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay na. So, clear, marinig okay, na tayo, sorry, ha? Sorry. Okay, so, yun po. Uh, and the law on this, no? And now, if you are the lessee of the property and you're dealing with a person which has a title on the property, kasi yung lease contract natin, pwede po nating ipa-annotate po yan doon sa title. That is one of the rights of a lessee to request the lessor, the owner of the property, na yung lease contract niya is mapa-annotate on the title. Bakit po natin gusto ipa-annotate? So that we could be protected that sometimes if ibenta nila or kailangan i-respect yung lease contract natin na existing, no? na hindi pa nag expire So that when the buyer buys the property, merong annotation doon na may lease contract it has to be respected at saka kapag meron kasing mga lease contracts wherein uh, the it has this option first option to buy or first right of first refusal so the buyer of that property may be able to see it upon getting a certified true copy that there is a lease contract with the right of first refusal of the lessee so in a sense as a lessee, ma-protect po tayo kapag na-annotate natin doon sa title ang lease contract. Now, this is very true, especially when we lease only a parcel of land, no? 
long term lease pagkatapos tatayo tayo ng building tatayo tayo ng mga gasoline stations and everything we need to have it annotated in order to protect us no if we are the lessee now what happens if case that the lessor will not allow you to annotate or hindi niya ipairam yung titulo even if the fact that sa lease contract is na agreed na ipapa-annotate yung title tapos nung hinihingi mo na yung titulo ay ibigay now the law on lease says that we are protected wherein we could file an adverse claim no the the, the lessee may file an adverse claim on the ground that pinihiram mo yung title para ma-annotate ng lease contract at hindi niya ibigay so we are going to protect that claim what is that our claim the length of time that we are supposed to lease the property that is the adverse claim that we can have it annotated under the law on lease no or rent no okay so yun ang mga protection kaya maganda nga pagtulado under the torrents title system okay ano pa uh, meron tayong rules no governing encroachments on the land of another now take note that if your property is titled and somebody encroached upon you you all can simply say that you could boot out that person because under the principle again sa bundle of rights natin yung use possidende to the exclusion of other persons to possess and use the property to the exclusion of other persons now you could always find refuge to your title wherein pwede ka magpa uh, relocation survey at determine natin ang mids and bounds na stated in the title and show it to the person who encroached that hey you have encroached the property of the uh, of my property oh, pwede mong sitahid siya doon or kung sakali naman bibili ka and it's a titled property and you have it uh, surveyed at makita mo may mga encroachments you could demand that it be removed depende na kung good paid or bad paid which we will discuss later on so yun po yung mga mga laws no na nagaprotect no? additional protection and of course with on the rules of builders planters and sowers no yan yung nag-aaway yung mga property boundaries no kasi this is very important if your property is titled um you are protected no by somebody who built something in the property in bad faith or even in good faith or a planter who planted on your property in uh, good faith or even in bad faith tsaka yung sowers no ano yung sowers yung nagtanim din yan but i'll discuss later on with you so um okay i will i will i will discuss one thing that is very important when it comes to uh encroachments no uh the best way kasi dapat is that we will have to conduct a relocation survey for example this is the property that you are going to buy this is ito yung hindi location ng property na gusto mong bilhin no ayan no kita mo dikit-dikit ang bahay no and suppose you are going to purchase a property somewhere here ito dito and if you'll notice para nagkadikit yung bubong ni green at saka ni puti and teka bibilhin ko ba itong green na bahay na ito baka may encroachment ito so what can you do getting the title you can have it uh surveyed no ang tatawag po natin yan if a survey we will hire a uh geodetic engineer okay so what is this uh thing that we are talking about this relocation survey no it is the purpose is to determine the possible uh encroachment on the property and or overlapping boundaries okay so ako mag nagkakandak po nito mga geodetic engineers so we will have to talk about some background of this geodetic engineer. So, the first question is that, what is a relocation survey? Kasi yun ang kakailangan natin gawin, relocation survey, to relocate. No? Okay. The meaning is that it is a method of determining the precise identification of an established land, its corners, and the limits or boundaries. Now, if you have a title, establish na yung mids and bounds ng properties mo. Meron na siyang corners, meron ng limits kung hanggang saan, at saka yung boundary niya. Now, ang gagawin lang po ng geodetic engineer is to relocate it 
kung yun ba rin pa ang location. Para ituro sa iyo, ito po yung location ninyo. Okay? So that is a relocation survey. And they use what way they call, yung unang karaan na, yung luma nila na way is yung theodolite at tawag nito. No? But uh, they are still na uh, old school using this one. Pero medyo high tech na ngayon. They use GPS. They use even satellites now. I really am not uh, knowledgeable about this. But yes, uh, they are actually medyo high tech na mga geodetic engineers natin. Okay, so the question is, what is the purpose of this survey? Well, actually, the main purpose of this kind of survey is to re-establish. Kasi establish na nga eh. Re-establish the boundaries of a track of land. Wherein, meron ng previous survey na nangyari before, no? And has already been undertaken and to verify kung ang existing location of the property overlaps adjoining lots. So, yun ang purpose natin kung mayroon bang overlapping, no? So, very important itong relocation survey. In fact, kapag uh, meron na tayong ma-request ma pa nga natin sa mga geodetic engineer, kindly put yung a monument or sa tawag nating mohon, no? Mohon. Okay. So, yan. PS. Hindi po yan PS. I love you. That is private survey meaning PS, no? Now, in the United States, just to show you, ito po ang kanilang monument as compared to us. No? Kawawa talaga tayo, no? Semento lang, in-engrave lang yung PS. Pero sa kanila, uh, talagang ang kanilang survey made of bronze. Yan, doon nakalagay sa lupa, no? And if you will notice also, may nakalagay dito sa enlarge natin konti. May nakalagay dito na $250 fine or imprisonment for disturbing this mark. Oh, yun ang sinasabi. Oh. For disturbing this mark or monument. No? Now, the question is, meron po ba tayo nito pagkapag bunutin or tanggalin yung mohon? Ang dami po, di ba? Na problem natin, tinanggal yung mohon. Is that allowed? Is that... Uh, uh, is is that prohibited is that punishable under the law okay so meron po din tayong batas diyan okay ang batas po natin is article 313 of the revised penal code as amended by republic act 10951 kasi pinataasan ang penalty and it carries the uh, penalty of fine not exceeding 20000 pesos and imprisonment of 1 to 30 days or both at the discretion of the court so, may kulong provision yan. Now, sabihin natin makapiyansa ka. Correct. Sabihin natin makaprobation ka kahit makonvicted ka. Correct. But you will still be a convicted felon. So, ibig sabihin, uh, ex-convict ka pa rin. So, ibig sabihin po, sana huwag natin tanggalin ang mohon or mag-utos tayo. Baka ilipat yung mohon kaya hindi yan tama ang pagkalagay ng surveyor nila or ng kanya survey. Dapat doon yan. Di ba? No. Meron tayong remedy under the law. You could go to court and determine. Kaya nga, uh, may nitiyatawag tayong joint relocation survey. Kung gusto mo mag-survey, sabihan mo yung kapitbahay mo, mag-survey ako, you want to join or you want to observe or you can get your own surveyor. No? And there is always the court to determine which among the, these uh, boundaries uh, ang kanino, you know, kung meron ba overlapping or wala. Okay? Okay. So, with that, uh, who conducts this relocation survey? Of course, we know for a fact that under the Philippine Judetic Engineering Act of 1998, Republic Act Number 8560, only geodetic engineers licensed by the PRC may conduct land surveys. Okay, so, alam po natin, geodetic engineer. Kasi bakit ko binigyan sila ng space and time dito sa ating discussion? Because they are our partners in the real estate world or industry. Kailangan po na partner natin at hindi ba yung mga partners natin, geodetic engineers, lawyers, and real estate appraisers. Yan mga usual partners natin na dyan lang nagre-reworld ang mundo natin. Eh. Yun ang mga tao na kausap natin always. Alright? So, take note of this uh, uh, particular slide no, on genetic engineers. Okay, so proceeding, we are now going to discuss itong encroachment. No? And I'll try to, to talk to you and discuss with you a certain example, no? a, a true story that happened. So, the question is, what is this encroachment all about? No? So, sabi ng definition, it is a situation in a real estate no? when another property owner intrudes, pinasok niya, 
ang property right or the property itself of his neighbor by building or extending a structure which includes sowing and planting, tinaniman niya, uh, sa kanyang neighbor's land or property unintentionally, which may be good faith, or intentionally, uh, it's bad faith. No? Sinadya talaga niya in bad faith siya. Now, yung property rights po, napapasukin, marami po yan. Yung, one example, yung pumasok yung mga puno, yung sanga ng puno, tapos merong uh, prutas, nakabitay doon, tapos naka nakawin ng kabila dahil sabi niya ay naka, nakastay sa akin. No? That is an invasion of the property rights. You could demand that the the branches could be cut. no Or merong yung alulod nakapasok doon sa ano, at sa rainwater going inside the property of another. That is encroachment on the property rights of another. Now, the encroachment per se na naman yung naka-intrude talaga sa lupa, yun na yung involves the building may binil doon sa loob pumasok sa property line mo or merong siyang tinanim doon or meron siyang uh, bininhian doon yung tetaw nating sewing okay so let us give an example of that so here is Jojo no uh, Jojo and Abong no they are best of friends so, so they bought the property and they have been neighbors for quite a time no so ito po yung property at ito yung boundary nila no meron yang wall diyan that is This is based on actual case no, that I had. And si Bong, nagpatay siya. Si Jojo, nagpatay ng bahay. Pati si Bong. Of course, magka... Ano sila? Kapit bahay sila eh. So, they have this... Uh, they have this... Uh, they stay there. They resided there. Meron na silang family dyan. No? At ito si Jojo, nagtanim siya no? doon sa property niya. Eh, kasi medyo malaki-laki itong property na ito. It's uh, about uh, almost uh, half an hectare itong both parties. Ganon din ginawa ni Bong. Eh. Kung magtanim ka, magtanim din ako. No? In addition, ang ginawa ni Bong, aside sa magtanim siya ng mga trees, eh, nagtanim din po siya ng mga crops. no. And this is what we call now, what we call is sowing and planting, the difference nila. no. Ang sabi ng, ng definition po ng sowing, the act of tossing seeds, yung tatapon lang natin yung seeds no, in a controlled manner, into the soil in order to initiate their sprouting no into baby plants no tapos yung baby plants is the act of taking a plant already established with roots stem and leaves digging a hole then you place the roots into the hole and fill it yun po ang planting iba rin yung sowing so alam ko magaling kay dito dahil nung panahon ng pandemic lahat po tayo gardener no marami pong nag garden garden sa atin all right so Jojo and Bong, they are best friends. They 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 play basketball nga doon eh. That's the truth. No? That's the truth. No? They play basketball. And they are actually good friends. no. So, uh, what happened is that sabi ni Jojo, Bong, uh, I think I have to to leave already because uh, I'm going to migrate to Canada with my family and I want you to purchase this property. Ko, itong property ko. Kasi, titulado ito para samantay, nabili natin, no? So, you might as well purchase it. Sabi ni Bong, wala ko pera eh. Ah, ganun ba? Uh, sige, so, benta ko na lang ito sa iba. Or, eh, benta ko na lang sa kapatid ko. Para, oh, sige, ikaw, bahala pa rin. Walang problema yan siya. So, you know, uh, that's, that's what happened. no So, unknown to Jojo and Bong, yung red marks na yan, yan pala ang actual boundary nila. Yan pala ang property line nila. So, hindi nila alam yon That is the allegation of Bong. Hindi niya alam. Okay. And kasi in this particular problem and scenario, it appears na si Bong talaga ang naka-encroach kay Jojo. Look at ha. Anong na-encroach niya? Here, ang na-encroach niya, number one, is this area. O ito. Itong sa ano niya? Itong sa garage niya. Nakapasok siya. Kasi yan ang boundary line nila. No? Tapos, nakatanim siya ng mga crops niya dyan. At nakapag-plant din siya ng mga trees. So, that is the boundary for which uh, naka-encroach siya. No? Okay. Now, so what happened after that is that uh, the question is, if Bong is uh, claiming to be in good faith, what would be the rule? No? Kasi ngayon nga, na-discover later on, kasi yung bumili, 
is nagpakandak ng relocation survey and na-determine nga naka-encroach si Bong. At sabi niya, Sir Bong, ako po yung kapatid ni Jojo and naka-encroach pala kay sa property ni Kuya. So, dapat po eh, pag-usapan po natin ito. Okay, yan ang rule. No? Now, the question is, uh, what will happen? No? Sabi kasi ni Bong, I am in good faith. Now, actually, the rule is that determination nito paanong bayaran at i-settle ang problem depends upon the good faith or the bad faith of the the bong no yung yung naka encroach no that would be depend on that so uh, let us see um under the rules kasi no parati natin marinig yung good faith and bad faith no in almost all human interactions referring to that alam mo i am innocent good faith ko daw siya ang bad faith ba i'm good faith din ba so good faith and bad faith are also present in property disputes no and the importance of being in good faith means the difference between having the right to be reimbursed, baka pwede ka mabayaran kung good faith ka, or being liable for damages kung in bad faith ka. Actually, the Supreme Court in many occasions have said that uh, builder in good faith, no, under Article 4.8 of the Civil Code, yung isang tao na not being the owner of the land, builds in the land, believing himself to be the owner of that property. Eh, nag-build siya, akala niya kanya eh and unaware of the defect in his or her title no or mode of acquisition so the essence of good faith lies in an honest belief of in the validity of his claim or right over the property or there is an ignorance of that there is a superior claim by another and absence of intention defraud, to defraud no or to to encroach or overreach another person no so yun po ang and definition sabi ng Supreme Court no and of course under the civil code ang uh, important matter dito no uh, okay under article 448 to 456 no yung sabi ko yung good faith or bad faith lang naman na pinag-uusapan diyan and the rule of thumb is that always presume po tayo is in good faith no wala pong presumption na in bad faith no now when you allege that the other person is in bad faith hey in bad faith ka sinadya mo yung mag-build ka diyan para makalamang ka sinadya mo magtanim diyan para makapag uh, take advantage ka sa akin uh, at my own expense ginamit mo yung lupa mo lupa ko so you are in bad faith now you have to uh, uh, make some proof because ang sabi niya anong ebidensya mo na in bad faith ako okay you got any proof sabi nga dito so you have to give the clear and convincing evidence to prove that the person is in bad faith okay let's go back to the example between uh, Bong and Jojo no? now uh, let us assume this time that in this particular case is that in good faith si Bong no? talagang wala siyang uh, the presumption lies with him na he was really in good faith. So, anong rules po natin dyan kung good faith siya? Ano pong pwedeng hingiin nung nakabili ng property ni Jojo sa kanya? Okay. Number one rule is that um, lahat daw ng tinanim uh, tinanim uh, ni ginawa or gibuild doon at pinland doon pwede pong kunin nang may-ari sa kan na para okay akin na po 'yan dahil dahil sa naka-encroach ka itong tanim mo at saka itong garage mo akin na ito okay pero kailangan po bayaran po si Bong because he is a builder sower or planter in good faith so ano yung value ng garage na yan bayaran mo tapos ano yung value ng mga crops at saka mga tanim bayaran mo kasi good faith nga siya hindi naman siya intentional kung gusto mong ang kinin okay ang properties na naka-encroach doon okay and then uh, number 2 second option o oh, pwede mong o oh, sige uh, ayoko ayoko namang pangit naman yung bilhin ko na lang diyan no? hindi no na naman ako intention na ganun so ganito na lang Mr. Bong, dahil nakapasok ka man, in good faith ka man kaya, o oh, sige, uh, ang gawin natin is, bayaran mo na lang yung price ng lupa. Ibenta ko na lang yan sa'yo, no? 
uh, but he cannot be obliged to buy the land if its value is more than the value of the building. No? Of course, hindi siya mapilit. Otherwise, kung mas malaki po yung value ng um, lupa kaysa doon sa value ng building, babayad lang siya ng renta. Okay. So, pay lang ng rent. No? Pero kung sower ka, yung nagbinhi ka lang, no? siyempre, nagpapata, ano ka pa lang, is renta lang po ang ma-force mo. You could choose, no? Between these two options, no? And, if they cannot agree the terms of the, magkano yung valuation, no? They cannot agree, the court will fix them. So, ang court. Now, before the court can fix this one, dyan na naman papasok ang ating isang friendly neighborhood, the real estate appraiser. Kasi, mag-a-appoint ang korte ng independent appraiser to be as commissioner to determine the value of the property. Kasi, either kung chinoose ni no nakabili na kapatid ni Jojo, number one or number two, because in those instances, merong valuation na kailangan. The reasonable market value. O hindi sila magkaintindihan. Pero sana magkaintindihan para hindi na magpunta sa court kasi kung magpunta pa sa court, gastos pa, bayad ka pa ng abogado, di ba? So, yan po ang mangyari. Now, what if we go back to the similar scenario where this time si ano po si Bong now is in bad faith. Okay, bad faith siya. So ano po ang rule kapag in bad faith siya? Sinadya niya na mag, mag magtayo ng garahe, magtanim. Alam niya talaga noon pa. Okay, na pureba na patunayan nung nakabili ng property ni Jojo na talagang in bad faith siya. Bakit? Well, of course he has this uh, previous relocation survey before and he knew it may nagtestify na alam niya na may encroachment pero sige lang okay lang hindi niyan alam ng kaibigan ko kaya tanga yan si Jojo parang ganun ba no so kung ma-prove po yan siya ng by clear and convincing evidence at mapatunayan in bad faith si Bong what will happen is that the owner of that property na nabili kay Jojo may mga options siya number one first option lahat ng tinanim at gibuild gisow giplant may be appropriated by the owner as his own. By the new owner who bought it from Jojo. Pwede niyang akin na yan. Lahat. Now, question. Babayaran ba niya si Bong? Ang question is that, the answer is that, no. Bong has no right to be indemnified. Hindi siya babayaran. Bakit? It bad paid ka eh. Kunin ko lahat yung tinanim mo. Kunin ko yung lupa ako. Akin yung tanim mo. Akin na yung mga binhi mo dyan. Akin na rin yung garahe mo. At hindi kita babayaran. At meron pang masakit. Babayad ka pa ng danyos perwisyo sa akin. For the longest time that you use that, you will be liable for damages. This is the first option. The second option would be ito. Sabi niya, pipiliting kita. Kanina obliged. So ngayon compel. I can compel you, number one, to pay the price of the land. Bilihin mo yung in-encroach mo na lupa that ayaw kong angkinin yan. Plus, uh, you have to, uh, kung sower naman, you have to pay the, the proper rent. Tapos, in both cases, meron pong danyos perwisyo. Imagine that. No? Dalawa lang bang options niya? Katulad dun sa good faith? No. Meron pang ikatird option na pwedeng pipiliin ng landowner against Bong, the person in bad faith. No? Number three, demand. Pwede po siya maka-demand that the builder shall demolish the building. Sirain mo building mo, bunutin mo yung mga tanim mo dyan, pananim mo and everything. And uh, from the sower planter, remove all the plants, all those na tinanim mo. Remove that, destroy it, and restore it back to the uh, yung patag na walang ano, walang walang wala nang ibang naka naka-use ng property. Kaya balik nyo sa akin in its natural condition. Now, and to replace, sabi nga, no? to replace things in their former condition at his expense, at the expense of bomb. Tapos po, meron pa rin damages. Kaya nga, pag in bad faith ka, ang laki ng problema mo. Because in both three instances were in option po nung uh, person, ng property, no? is that si Jojo or even sa nakabili sa property sa kanya, yung 1, 2, 3, in all these instances, meron pong 
damages po. Kahit anong iyak mo dyan, bayad ka talaga ng danyos perwisyo. That is mandated under the law. Alright? Now, I will show you this actual drawing, no? Sketch. To show to you kung meron bang good faith or bad faith, no? Um, ito. Here is this, uh, I will um, discuss with you, ha? Huh? So, here is this uh, property of uh, Mr. X. You will notice sa gitna, no? Ito yung property ni Mr. X. Para king ko lang, no? Yan. And if you, oops, sorry. And if you will notice is that Dito po sa area na ito, merong brown line. And that is supposedly the wall. However, the area, the property, the boundary line. No? However, if makita po ninyo itong, tag, itong, itong, itong broken lines here. This is actually, the, may existence po siya ng concrete wall. May wall na dyan ngayon. Now, ang area ni property of Mr. A, kung makita mo, may encroachment siya na maliit. Si Mr. B, nandoon yung sa taas, may encroachment siya na 60 square meters. Yung kabila naman, may encroachment si Mr. C, mas malaki. No? Nakuha niya dyan. Now, ang question dito ngayon is that here, no? That is the encroachment of Mr. A, that small portion, which is actually 16 square meters lang pag compute po namin. Tapos kay Mr. B, ang encroachment po niya, 60 square meters. No? Si Mr. C, mas malaki. Yan, 120 square meters. Now, para magwagi nito, kung sino, kung anong options ba tayo doon sa good pit or bad pit, is yung determination nga ng good faith or bad faith. Now, take note, ito ang pinaka-issue dito. Now, if you'll notice this broken line here, no? broken line here, it clearly shows the existence of the concrete wall. Now, ang tanong lang po, sino ang naglagay ng concrete wall na yan? Now, if it is one of those who encroach, or all the three of them, or two of them, Mr. A, Mr. B, or Mr. C, automatic po in bad page sila kasi they built that uh, wall inside the property line of Mr. X. However, if it was Mr. X who built that existing concrete wall, then it's possible that A, B, and C may claim good faith. Kasi sasabihin nila, eh may wall na dyan, eh di, akala namin, amin na rin ito. Okay. So, yun po ang issue dyan, no? Para madetermine kung saan tayo mag-fall, sa so, good faith or bad faith. Okay? Take note of that, ha? So, maganda po, no? Kapag titulado po ang property, this is a title property, makita mo po yung, yung meets and bounds na, yung corner post, is it because may technical description po siya. Kaya po siyang irrelocation survey, madali po siya hanapin, ng judetic engineer. Okay? So, yun lang po, no? Kinaklaro ko lang at ina-explain ko sa inyo ano po ang difference po kung sakaling ganun ang sitwasyon. Okay. So, let us proceed, no? So, meron ding isasing encroachment po, no? Ito. Yung alulud. I made a video on this. Ito yung picture. Diba? Kita mo, ang reklamo yung ano eh, reklamo yung tao. Sabi niya, si kapitbahay nagpagawa ng lahat ng yan. Ang alulud ng kapitbahay namin nakapasok. Imagine na ang gutter na sa loob ng, <laughs> ng, ng property ng kabila. Pinasok pa niya. Imagine that, no? Sobra. So, if you'll notice the gutter no, inside. So, that is kind of classic way of, uh, classic example of this encroachment. Now, kaya nga sabi ko, uh, you can be protected if you have this uh, title, everything. No? 
Okay, so <clears throat> before I would proceed to the next part, maybe you may have some questions. I can give about 10 minutes to 10 minutes to answer your questions if you have some. Meron po ba magtatanong or I will proceed now? Okay, wala. Uh, sige. I will proceed now. So, we will discuss now. Uh, we'll go now to the second part. Actually, this is the second part of my topic, no? Which, um, in-incorporate ko dito kasi bitit nga, no? And I have to continue with the lecture until 10. So, uh, we will talk about the Land Registration Authority. Okay. Si Land Registration Authority, um, yan po siya eh, under the supervision of the Department of Justice. No? Uh, under the OJ po si LRA, no? ang purpose ng creation nito is, of course, to have a more efficient execution of the laws relative to the registration of lands, uh, geared down to have a massive and accelerated land reform and social justice program to government. Blah, blah, blah. Ang ganda, pakinggan. Alright, so, si LRA. No? Now, uh, LRA, ang composition po niya present ngayon, ito po siya. So, ang administrator po natin, ngayon, LRA administrator, si Gerardo Panga Sirius. I got this from their website. Ang deputy administrator nila, meron silang dalawang deputy administrator for operation. Isa naman for administration, operation and administration. Meron din silang uh, under the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program na deputy. Tapos meron din silang IT and the Planning and Management Division, Administrative Service, Financial Service, Land Registration Operation Service, and Legal Services. So, yan po ang ang composition po ng LRA natin. Now, just to let you know, yung administrator po natin, under po sa Executive Order 649, ang kanya pong ranggo is Associate Justice ng Court of Appeals. Wow, no? Parang Justice ng Court of Appeals po siya. And yung dalawa pong deputy administrator niya, ang kanilang ranggo at salary is based on, as an assistant secretary. Wow, malalaki, no? Malalaki ang sweldo. Sarap applyan ito. Associate justice para kung justice para nito. Okay. So, yan. And, um, of course, ang register of deeds. Okay. Under sa uh, LRA, merong mga register of deeds po, no? And ang dami pong mga registry, register of deeds na nakakalat po sa buong Pilipinas. Remember, yung diniscuss natin during the Sherman and Taft Commission wherein uh, they enacted yung Act 496 and then doon nakakalat ang napakaraming register of deeds. Siguro ko konti pa lang noon, but now ang dami po sa buong Pilipinas ng mga registry of deeds. Ito po, iba ba ang registry of deeds yan sa buong Pilipinas? Now, if you could guess, at baka lumabas sa board exam, ilan po ang registry of deeds sa buong Pilipinas? Ito po, 169. Hindi na lang talaga dinagdagan ng isa para 170, no? 69 pa talaga ang ending. Nak ng pating. Okay, so Land Registration Authority. Yan po ang mga registry of deeds. Okay, so ano po ba ang ang itong administrator natin. No? Ano ba itong si Land Registration Authority? Ano ba yung mga functions niya na pwede niyang gawin? No, basahin natin isa-isa ito. No? Nag-i-issue po sila ng decree of registration pursuant to final judgment of the court. No? Now, remember that kapag meron pong judicial titling, remember? Judicial titling. Tapos, uh, nag-issue ng court decree ang ang korte na saying that this land be decreed uh, in favor of the the petitioner okay directing now the land registration authority to issue a decree of registration because my final judgment ng court no? in land registration proceedings so i issue siya ng titulo okay judicial po ah hindi po administrative kasi kung administrative DNR po ang mag-iissue niyan at at trabaho lang ng registry of deeds in that particular case 
uh, mag uh, ng parang iano lang nila yang i entry lang nila okay ito first time talaga ito issue a decree of registration tapos utusan nila ang registry of deeds kung saan the property is located to issue the corresponding certificate of title okay that is the instance only that the LRA is directed to issue a registration plus eh, the registry of deeds the corresponding certificate of title based on that registration in fact meron akong nakita niyan isang title talagang gawa no ng may decree tapos the state doon based on the decision of this court under regional trial court blah 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 tapos nakalagay doon ang ang decree of registration no and the title was issued under that all right so yan po ang unang trabaho nila no ng administrator And of course, they exercise supervision and control over all the 169 register of deeds no? and personnel of the commission. Ang dami yan, no? And then of course, uh, they resolve cases elevated and consulta or on appeal from decision of register of deeds. Remember, magpa-annotate kay sa register of deeds tapos i-deny. Tapos, kanyari, especially in adverse claims, no? Tapos, pag deny, you could bring it no, to the land registration authority sa administrator para through in consulta. In consulta is appeal. Yeah, no? uh, Latin lang na term, in consulta. Parang yakit mo doon on, on the degree of appeal. Alright. So, yan po siya. And then, mag-execute exercise executive supervision over all clerks of court and personnel of the RTC. With respect to the discharge of their duties and functions in relations to registration of plants, okay? Uh, executive supervision lang, tutulungan nila yung mga clerks of court. Kasi nga, sometimes, uh, yung land registration court, meron mga clerks of court sila doon, tutulungan sila kasi mas nakakalam ang LRA kung paano ang proseso. Alright? And, mag-implement sila ng orders, decisions, and decrees, no? Promulgate relative to registration of land and issue subject to the approval of justice all needful rules and regulations. Kaya, kung merong mga bagong batas no, na pinasa, katulad ng Republic Act 1156, which will affect later on the registry of deeds, meron din silang mga risk. And they also hold um, meetings with other government agencies no, para magkaroon po ng ang flow na, na hindi masalimuot sa pag-process para walang overlapping of jurisdictions and functions. And of course, to verify, yes po, and approve subdivision plan, pag gusto nyo i-subdivide, consolidation, or yung na-subdivide na, i-consolidate ninyo ang mga titulo, or i-consolidate tapos i-subdivide na naman. Ano ba talaga? <laughs> uh, properties titled under act number 496. Imagine, they are still saying act number 496 referring to that one enacted during the uh, Tough and Sherman Commission, no? yung under the Philippine Commission pa. So, kaya nga po magtaka kayo, pag meron kayong uh, approved subdivision plan from the Bureau of Plans, then you file a petition for splitting at the Registry of Deeds. Sabi ng Registry of Deeds, iakit pa namin ito sa LRA, papa-approve. Kasi, meron tayong procedure, do although ini-email lang nila yan for approval. No? So, yun. Then, pag ma-approve, okay na. Exception po, ang hindi nila pwedeng galawin na subdivision is yung uh, covered by PD-957. Ano po yung PD-957? Yung, yung subdivision lots ng mga uh, subdivision developers na may license to sell. Ang D8 sud kasi ang, ang in charge niya. No? Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. So, yan, tatandem yan sila. No? Ang D8 sud and of course the land registration authority all right so yan po ang basic na trabaho ng land registration authority through the administrator okay so we will proceed uh, suppose okay you have this it was denied by the registry of deeds no mag sabi niya okay yang yang pinapa-register mo di sa amin ayo namin yan denied okay So, having denied, you have to go to to the LRA, Administrator, and consulta. Diba? Ayan. So, 
Sa batas po ng 1529, yung land registration law natin, it provides for the duty of the register of deeds to register na lahat ng instruments concerned. However, um, immediately register nga kasi ministerial na. Pero, sinasabi dito, i-register namin kapag nag-comply with all the requisites for registration. Pag hindi po nag-comply, whether it's for annotation of address claim, subsequent registration or transfer titles, everything. Ang dami po kasi, no? Annotation of real estate mortgage, etc. Well, we will. Sabi ng register of deeds. In fact, it's ministerial. Basta kompleto na kayo ng requirements. But, if our examiner finds out that you have not complied even one of the requirements, we may require you, of course, to comply with it. Or if you cannot comply, we will be going to deny it and return it to you. Now, if it is returned, ang sabi ng batas is that dahil dininay, okay? If it is not registrable, okay? Sabihin niya po na denied ang registration. At sabihin yung presentor of such denial in writing. Nakasulat po ha, in writing dapat. Sabihin niya ang grounds kung bakit dininay ko. Hindi po registrable on the following grounds. Tak, 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 tak. And advise siya doon that you have the right to appeal by consulta in accordance of Section 117 of Presidential Decree Number no. 1529. Okay. So, ang power ng Registry of Deeds, they, is, although it's ministerial for them to to register an instrument in their system as long as if it is uh, if the requirements are called complete however if it is not complete at hindi registrable do nakaka-exercise sila ng power to deny the registration dalawa lang man po talaga ang trabaho ng register of deeds either to approve or to deny wala na pong iba okay merong iba sabi niya i-comply mo or i-deny ko mabait yun sila no Pero actually, dapat ang role nila is that approve or deny. Yun lang po, no? And pag deny, if follow nila ito po, number one, take note of this, ha? I-inform in writing, stating the grounds, at advising them that they have the right to uh, appeal this by way of and consulta to the Land Registration Authority Administrator. Okay? So, take note of that, ha? Proceeding, um... Let us talk about this uh, procedure. Uh, bilis lang, no? Kunti lang, mabilis lang. Ano ba yung mga procedures, no? So, uh, pag notify ng register of deeds sa uh, interest party in writing, sabi niya ano yung mga depekto ng instrumento at saka mga legal round, bakit gideny ang registration, uh, okay, hindi ka agreeable sa findings ko po, pwede niyo po i-akyat, no? Uh, ang... ang mga papeles, it could sulta to the administrator of LRA. Huwag niyo na po i-withdrawin ang papeles sa akin. Just say na mag consulta ka, bayad ka ng appeal fee, uh, pero hindi niyo na po pwede mo na withdrawin, ipapadala namin yan doon. Okay? Now, sa loob ng limang araw, from receipt of the notice of denial, yung presenter or yung party in interest na dininay ang kanyang registration may file in consulta and pay the consulta fee. No? Meron silang uh, amount, no? Tapos pagkatanggap po ng consulta and payment of the corresponding fee, ang Registry of Deeds, make an annotation of the pending consulta. Kaya pag nakita po ninyo doon sa may mga certified true copy na adverse claim denied and it is a pending in consulta with the LRA, it's still an annotation at the back. Well, is that um, a notice that would bind the whole world? Yes. It binds the whole world that it is subject to appeal. It was denied by the Registry of Deeds. For example, magparegister sila ng adverse claim, is denied by the registered deeds, but it is still pending appeal. So, it would still put you into caveat or warning not to deal with that particular piece of the property or be cautious or take uh, necessary uh, precaution in transacting with that property kasi nga may nag claim na iba or may problem. Merong pinapa-register na instrument na dininay and it is under appeal now before the Land Registration Authority. So, take note of that, ha? Nakikita po yan, no? And consult. I don't know if you have seen one, no? I have seen a few. And yun nga, pending doon sa LRA. Okay, and then, notify. 
legal grounds, defects, tapos uh, within 5 days, yan, from receipt, again, and makes an annotation of the pending and consulta at the back. Okay, take that, that. Then what happens after that? Okay, let's go to 456. Tapos i-elevate na yan ngayon ng registry of deeds to the ILRA administrator. No? Kasama ang certified records and summary of the facts and issues involved. Parang korte ba? Uh, magkakaroon ng hearing, no? Ang LRA, magkakandak ng hearing. Pwede or pwede hindi. No? Pwede hindi. Pwede i-decide lang nila on their own. Now, sa charter po nila, magulat kayo, meron po silang period we need to decide. And we have to respect that because that is, that is should be. Hindi dapat abot ng taon. No? So, take note of that. No? After the hearing, the LRA administrator issues an order prescribing the steps to be taken no? or the memorandum to be made. Ang resolution niya, whether uh, uh, yun ba eh, tama ba ang registry of deeds or mali, dapat mo register yan, mali ang pag mo, sabi niya, Mr. Registry of Deeds, you're wrong or you're correct, I will uphold your decision of denying registration. Now, this shall be conclusive and binding upon all registry of deeds. But it can still be reversed if you file, kung natalo ka pa rin doon sa LRA, you could still elevate it to the Court of Appeals by way of appeal. Not to the court na tayo. Exhaustion of administrative remedies doon sa part ng, ng LRA because other executive department but without prejudice to going to the Court of Appeals after the LRA finds out na talo ka pa rin doon, or So, you can go to the Court of Appeals. So, ibig sabihin, kapag nandun na sa Court of Appeals sa Supreme Court, bak, pwede ka na naman magpatatak ng list pendants kay may pending uh, consult. So, may dudumihan talaga ang titulo na yan. Alright? So, take note of that. No? Elevates the case to the LRA administrator, conducts hearing, tapos after hearing, order siya ng, gawa siya ng decision whether to approve the findings of the Registry of Deeds or reverse the finding of the Registry of Deeds subject to appeal to the Court of Appeals. No? Yun po. Okay, so let us go now to this Registry of Deeds. We are to discuss ano ba ang mga qualifications po na kung gusto nyo maging Register of Deeds. Well, the qualification under Section 9 of the law is that number one, kailangan abogado po. Sorry ah, yan ang qualification ng Register of Deeds and Deputy Register of Deeds. But, I have seen some in the provinces wherein ang deputy register of deeds nila LLB graduate, Juris Doctor. I think they have this uh, circular which allows that also, no? So, but for register of deeds, kailangan po abogado because you're dealing lands here. And second, you are going to see if the if the instrument is registrable or not, di ba? So, kailangan po yung may alam po sa batas. And hindi po yung baguhan lang po na abogado, diretso na register of deeds. You must be at this in three years of practice already. Okay? So, yun po si Mr. Registry of Deeds. Ang trabaho lang po niya, as I said, whether to approve or to deny. Okay. General functions po ni Register of Deeds. Okay. Ano po ba yung mga general functions ng Registry of Deeds natin? Well, una, Yung Registry of Deeds kasi, yung lugar niya, it constitutes a public repository of records of instruments. No? So, imbakan po siya, taguan po siya ng mga instruments ng titles. No? So, repository siya. Ngayon, meron na tayong e-title system. Um, meron tayong yung e-bolt na sa cloud na. No? Karamihan nung ano natin. So, yung titulo is hindi na basta-basta yan. Masu kahit masunog pa yan, yun na sa cloud lang e bolt niya eh. However, meron pa ring mga documents uh, still inside this uh, the office of the Registry of Deeds because yun nga, they are public repository of records of instruments affecting, take note, registered or unregistered lands. Yes po. Kasi baka kasi akala natin pag Registry of Deeds, uh, unregistered, a uh, registered land lang yung titulado. Hindi po, pati po yung mga unregistered of lands, nire-record po dyan ang mga transaction. I will discuss with you later on. In fact, I have this lecture, video lecture that I posted, no? And I will discuss later to you bakit ganun. Okay. Now, including yung mga shuttle mortgages, no? 
Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng chattel mortgage as distinguished from a real estate mortgage? Pag real estate mortgage po, lupa po yan na may utang at ginawang collateral po yung lupa na may titulo sa uh, transaction. Kaya real estate mortgage, ipapa-annotate ang REM doon sa uh, titulo. Okay. Now, kung chattel mortgage po, yan po is yung uh, personal properties like cars. no Kapag may prenda at hindi, syempre, may bayad ka tapos uh, installment. No? So, nakaprenda. So, may chattel mortgage. Kaya nga, encumbered. No? Magkita nyo doon. Encumbered with bank, etc. And that uh, piece of paper, yung mga transaction na yan, yung shuttle mortgage, will be recorded and kept with the registry of deeds. So, kasalama po ang personal property sa kanila. Okay? Plus, yung sinasabi ko nga, uh, real estate at saka uh, registered lands and unregistered lands. All right. And it shall be the duty of the registry of deeds to, you know, immediately register instrument. No? Basta nga, kompleto sa requirements for registration. No? Aside from that, kailangan po, kaya sila stricto, kaya marami dyan sa registry of deeds, meron nagbebenta ng stamp. No? Yung blue ba? Na buwis 30 pesos. Kailangan yung documentary and science stamps shall be uh, placed there in. No? Tapos kung meron silang ipapalitan na title, dahil ika-cancel nila para may bagong derivative title because of a new transaction or instrument that cancelled it, it should be properly cancelled. Kaya makita ninyo, kung magkuha kayo ng traceback documents, meron talagang word na cancelled yung previous title because another one has been issued, meron na pong derivative title na na-issue. Okay, yan po ang procedure. In fact, uh, under the rules, you could ask for a copy of that cancelled document. And in fact, if you process, you will be given even that cancelled documents. Kasi gagamitin mo man yung cancelled documents na yun, or cancelled title, ibibigay mo po doon sa local civil at uh, sa local city assessors para po mapalitan po din ang tax declaration. Di ba? So, para mapalitan. Kasi hindi man mag-end yung ating trabaho na pagdating sa registry of deeds, nalabas na yung title, yun lang. Hindi. Kung hingin mo yung cancelled title na may certified through copy ng cancelled title, it, bibigay mo yun dun sa uh, local city assessors para mapalitan din ng tax deck sa pangalan noon bagong nakatitulo. Ayan. Parang partner yan sila eh. Yung, yung tax deck plus the title itself should, have be, should bear the same name. Alright? So, take note of that. And in fact, pwede ka nga makahingi ng mga... But of course, um, medyo strict sila konti. Pag kami mga lawyers or real estate service practice, we can do that. Yung traceback documents. Pwede ka manghingi ano yung mga ginamit na instrument or document, notarized document, in order na makancel ito at bago nagawa. So, did of sale ba yun? O, hingi ka nun. Yung e-car. Kasi, naka, ano yun eh, naka, pinasok nila sa system, sa lari system nila yun. Yung mga lahat ng affidavits na nandoon. Yung kung may SPA man. Lahat, everything is, you could ask ito. Of course, it's not free. You have to pay for the certification PS kasi certified through copy man ibibigay sa inyo. This is, this is what we call traceback documents. This is necessary, especially as lawyers, when we need that uh, to present to court as an evidence, no? That, uh, yes, as an evidence that uh, really there is a, what we call, problem, no? So that we could prove the fact na mali ang pag a forge and document, kaya na transfer sa kanya. Uh, ang title sa new owner, it's a nullity because forged on document. Mga things like that. And we need those evidence, yung traceback documents ang hinihingi namin. Alright? So, yan po siya. And then, gaya ng sabi ko, ito, ito yung circular po, no? LRA circular wherein um, nakalagay dito na sale of registered lands LRA Circular ni Justice Renato Bermejo 
Tagadabaw ito, appoint, uh, President Duterte appointed ito siya. Tinan mo. Gi-clarify niya po, no? Gi-clarify niya mabuti dito. That, uh, LRC Reclar number 10-2020, official list of documents required for registration of sale of registered and unregistered lands. Di ba? Imagine that. So, let's go for the requirements of those uh, sale of registered lands. So, take note, original notarized deed of absolute sale executed by the registered owner in favor of the buyer with BIR stamp on the dorsal portion of every page. Ibig sabihin sa likod ng ng deed of sale may tatak doon ng BIR stamp usually ang RDO ang pipirma niyan each and every page sa dorsal or back portion ba yun ang kailangan nila na isasubmit mo sa registry of deeds hindi mo submit yan yan yung tawag na non-registrable yun di-deny ka ng registry of deeds kung hindi ka makapayag sa denial niya i-inconsulta mo ganyan nakasimple number two Yung Bureau of Internal Revenue Electronic Certificate Authorizing Registration or ICAR no? issued by the RDO no? of the BIR which has jurisdiction over the property subject of the sale. Number three, original ha? owner's duplicate copy of the title. So, turn, dyan na ang time na mag-turn over na tayo ng duplicate owner's copy of the title para mapalitan ito ng bago. And that new one is called the derivative title, no? So, original certificate of title, transfer certificate of title, CCT, condominium certificate of title, registered in the name of the seller. Okay. And on the next page, let us try and see. Okay. Ano pa? Latest, no? Ibig sabihin, kung 2023, 2023, certified through copy of the tax declaration on land and then building from the city assessor's office. Tapos, latest po, real property tax clearance. Kailangan po, bayad po ang mihoras a milyar. Latest po. Tapos, bayad po ang tax on transfer of real property. Yeah. Yan to or, yan tawag nyo lang transfer tax, no? Kailangan po natin ng resibo noon, nabayad po tayo, and how much is the tax on real property transfer under the local government code well dito sa amin because highly urbanized cities it's 87% of 1% po ang ang bayaran po no and it must be paid within a period of how many days 60 days okay and issued by the treasurer's office having jurisdiction over the properties subject of the sale now what is Very nice here is the sale of unregistered lands. No? The following are the requirements for the registration of sale of unregistered lands. Kailangan daw yung original notarized deed of sale na may BIR stamp. Bakit po may BIR stamp? Yes po, kasi kahit po magkabentahan ka ng hindi titulado na lupa, kailangan mo po magbayad sa BIR ng capital gain tax at dog stamp. Dadaan po yan siya at i-issuehan ka, number two here, ng e-car, Electronic Certificate Authorizing Registration. And another requirement is certified through copy ng tax deck, latest real property tax clearance, and transfer tax receipt. Ganun din, 0.7% to 1%. Ang wala lang po dito sa sale of unregistered land is yung titulo. Aside from that, yan po the same ang kanilang requirement. Bakit? Because after you have submitted that and it will be entered in the uh, books of unregistered land, yung transaction na ito, inilista nila yan, they'll give you a certification that you are have already registered it and it, you can use that document to go to the city assessors and replace your tax declaration. Kasi nga, di ba, kung ang hawak mo is unregistered, bili mo yung unregistered land, ang basihan mo, Secondary evidence sa pagbili is yung tax declaration, di ba? So, para mapalitan po yung tax declaration under your name, you need this to be registered with the BAR and you need to pay the taxes. Now, if it is now under your name and tax deck, that tax deck now 
if you have compliant already within the period of possession, uh, which under the the law nga is 20 years na, you can now apply for titling or agricultural patent, homestead, or residential pre-patent with the DNR. Kasi yun ang requirement nila, yung real uh, tax declaration under your name. Okay. Yun po ang importance nito. So I hope you understand the fact that these are the requirements po. Alright? Sige. So, let us proceed down. I think we still have time. Um... I would like to discuss uh, some the citizen charter of the land registration authority. No, this was uh, you could find this in their website. No, pag-usapan natin ang LRA charter. Dito kasi nakasaad ang ibat ibang proseso sa transaction ng lupa. No, gaya ng approval ng subdivision plan, splitting of title, in consulta, pag annotate ng real estate mortgage, etc. Dahil sa napakarami ng transaction dito, we have to choose only one. Later on, no? Kung maabot pa ng time natin. Alright. So, having said that, let us proceed. And yes, ito na. Ito po yung mga services na na-offer po nila. Marami pong services sila. Let us take this one by one for purposes of our learning as a real estate service management course natin. So, ito, sa central office nila, may internal services sila. Internal, ibig sabihin, para sa mga empleyado nila, no? So, yan. Um, list of services nila. Pwede yung processing application, deployment ng janitorial, security services, yung mga disbursement voucher, paano yung mga service records ng empleyado nila. Yan na. Okay. Now, meron din silang external service. Doon tayo mas importante, no? Need natin, eh. Central office nila. LRA ito, ha? Hindi ito register of deeds, ha? Yan na. Administrative Reconstitution, number one. Ano yung Administrative Reconstitution? Well, meron, meron tayong law wherein kapag naiwala yung titulo because uh, nasunog no? lahat ng, ng register of dates at merong uh, ilang percentage yun, um if I could not be mistaken, but not at, at least hindi magbaba ng 500 ang nawaw, nasunog is that pwede ka mag administrative constitution sa LRA without going to court. Ayan. So, yan ang administrative constitution. Yung nawala yung copy nila. But, I think that would now be difficult because ka, sabi ko, evolved na. Di ba? Yung amendment of technical description. Di ba? Kapag a technical script, description kulang ng type point, kulang ng mga mayroong errors, oh, may yan ang rules, no? Nandyan yung mga requirements. Makikita po ninyo dyan sa kanilang charter. Paano po yung procedure one by one para po ipa-amend yung technical description na nakalagay sa titulo. Okay. Approval of subdivision plan. Nandyan. Application for issuance of decree. Yung sabi ko, pag judicial uh, proceedings wherein the court now orders the LRA to uh, issue a decree of registration. Ito po. Application for issuance of decree of registration in ordinary land registration. Manual and E process. Okay. Approval of subdivision plan. Tapos approval uh, certification or certified through copy of cadastral records. Sila man na nag-keep din yan. No? Diyan tayo makakuha. No? Tapos yung verification sa comprehensive agrarian reform program. Certification of status plan approved by LRA. Collection of payments from the paying public. Yan ang mga services nila. Pero ba dito? Uh, inscription of technical description. Kung kulang. Di ba? So, ito po, no? Issuance of cadastral decree. Issuance of certification, endorsement, etc. Ito po yung kanilang mga uh, services. Now, we go now to the eto. Regional field offices external services. Yan, ang gusto kong pag-aralan natin. Uh, number one, yung external services nila, annotation on certificate of title in subsequent registration. Yan. Annotation of certificate of title in subsequent registration. Tapos, multi-stage processing. 
mag-issue ng certification, certified true copy. Siya rin ma-certified true copy sa title. Registry of deeds lang gumagawa nito. Registration ng chattel of mortgages, chattel mortgages, registration ng uh, owner's duplicate title, no? So, yun po ang rule, no? So, we will choose, you know, I'll choose number 7, subsequent registration, uh, page number 273, no? Yan po kasi ang rule, no? Uh, let us see. So, of course, um, tignan natin kung gaano katagal talaga ang process ng subsequent registration under the LRA Charter. Kasi under the Anti-Red Tape Act, all government agencies, local or national, mandated to to make a charter and give it to the public, show it to the public that ito po ang processing time na kaya namin gawin for a certain transaction. And kaya na sabi ko sa inyo, pag simple po, 3, 7 complex, 20, uh, highly technical. Okay. So, sa subsequent registration, yung pong ordinary deed of sale na may transfer from one person to another para magbago ng title under the name of the buyer. Ito po. Tawag yan is subsequent registration, no? So, from, I will use a manual title, no? OCT to uh, TCT. Pero pwede rin TCT to TCT. Same lang yan. Yan ang na subsequent registration. And we are going to discuss the requirements po. No? Okay, we'll start with the requirements muna. May na lang muna tayo doon sa, sa gano'ng katagal. No? And of course, uh, requirements, basic is nandito po. No? Uh, of course, una is yung original certificate of title. Kailangan po natin yan. And then, yung sinasabi kanina, yung deed of sale, na meron pong BIR nga nakastamp doon sa likod. Dorsal portion. Di ba yun ang discuss ko sa inyo kanina? Okay. And yan ang example ng ito. Ito po example ng sa dorsal portion o sa likod po ng BIR na nakatatak po yung BIR stamp. Nakalagay po dyan yung transaction number, ECAR number, date of ECAR, title number, at saka tax declaration. And pirmado po ng RDO. Okay? Yan po each and every page na deed of sale dapat meron yan. Para tanggapin po ng registry of deeds. Alright. And then, uh, proceeding, kailangan po natin ng original copy of the e-car. Ito po yung example natin ng e-car, di ba? Example ng e-car natin. Certificate Authorizing Registration of Land. Okay, yan. And then, certified through copy of the tax declaration of uh, original copy of real tax clearance. Of course, yung payment ng real property tax. Yan, no? bayad tayo. So, meron tayong real property tax clearance. Alright. And then, kailangan po din natin yung certified copy of the tax declaration itself. Okay, kanya yung clearance yun kanina, bayad tayo. Ito, dito sa Davao City, ang blue po is building, ang green po is land. Okay, yan po, requirement, original at certified true copy, latest 2023 po. Tapos yung transfer tax receipt, yung tinawag nating payment on tax on transfer of real property under the Republic Act 7160 of the Local Government Code. So, kailangan po natin resibo na bayad tayo niyan. Original po ibibigay natin. Now, of course, kung meron tayong ano, uh, patay, kailangan natin ng affidavit of publication. Mayroon extrajudicial settlement of estate with sale. Kailangan ng publication. No? Now, uh, this is an example, an affidavit of publication that, uh, okay. So, ang gagawa po ng affidavit po or mag-execute po, yung pong taga jaryo Ito, for example, si Pedro Kalungsod, siya po yung circulation manager of the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Sinasabi niya na yung exogenous settled estate of uh, Kate Bugalbot and Pupong Sapar, eh, na, ano raw, na, na, na-publish nila for three consecutive weeks, no? So, yan, notaryado po. Sampo lang po yan. So, kung wala niyan, uh, it's possible also na mag-require din sila na affidavits no ito yung hindi alam ng iba na mga affidavits no in case there are essential elements which are not indicated for example sa deed of sale nakalagay married lang ang uh, Juan de la Cruz married 
resident of Dabo City, etc. Tapos sa uh, baba, nagpirma naman yung wife niya, marital consent and everything, pero hindi nakalagay doon sa, sa dulo. So you have to execute an affidavit that Jesus you are married to this person. Or sometimes hindi mo nalagay ang nationality kong foreigner. Although it's just a description that you are married to that foreigner, but still, you have to place the nationality. Kasi parang dating labas sa title is that malagay doon ang nationality ng asawa. Although that is only a description that he is married to that person but nothing else. No, It doesn't mean that that foreigner um, has this ownership rights over the property. Okay? Take note of that. And of course, finally, kailangan po yung presenter. You know, present po, no? Ikaw mismo nag-process or may license officer ka or real estate service practitioner, kailangan po natin ng valid identification. Okay. Maganda, yung UMID, yan ang gusto ko kapag merong date of birth. UMID ID, driver's license, yan ang gusto ko. Yan. So, yan ang example po. No? Alright. So, marami po mga valid identifications. Ano po ba yung mga valid identification passports? Driver's license, SSID, UMID ID, postal ID, but, national ID, but, Um, PhilHealth ID and BIR TIN are not considered as valid identifications. So, hindi yan tatanggapin. Okay? So, take note of that. So, with that, you have this, uh, of course, a special part attorney kapag processor no? or liaison officer ka. Kailangan na SPA or if there are many co-owners on the property, tapos kailangan mo ng SPA from the other co-owners para yung authority mo ba. Okay, so yan an. And let's discuss now itong client steps. No? Sabi dito sa charter nila, kailangan daw ilagay po ito lahat sa isang uh, in sequential order. Ha? Kung anong pag-state dyan, dapat state mo yan, sunod-sunod dyan. Hindi pwedeng halo-halo yan. No? Uh, tapos, uh, ilagay mo yan sa isang long and clean folder. So, depende kung ang Brown or white and blotter, basta ilagay mo yun siya doon. Yun ang requirement nila eh. <laughs> Alright. So, sige. So, let's go down to part 2. Paano pa, gaano katagal, no? We'll just go fast. Uh, we still have a few minutes naman. So, yun nga. Meron ka ng, kuha ka ng folder. Lagay po niyo yan lahat sa folder, ha? Pasok natin. Ganyan naman ang requirement, no? And we are going to discuss now the workflow or gaano katagal. If you'll notice dito, uh, meron silang client steps, agency action, fees to be paid, processing time, and who is the person responsible. Ito po yung workflow nila under the citizen charter ng register of deeds. Okay. So, yan. Daladala mo na yung envelope. Diyan na yung lahat ng requirements. Punta ka na sa registry of deeds. Okay. And the first... Uh, thing that you have to do is to get a registration application form and fill it up, no? Ano ba ang nakalagay sa registration application form? Ito po, no? You just have to uh, complete it. Ikaw kasi presenter, eh. Presenter, no? So, ilagay mo presenter's name, address, date, contact number, email address. So, do you wish to convert the title to e-title? Of course, yes, no? Para mas protected tayo pag nasa e-title kasi na nalagay na yan sa e bolt natin, no? Tapos, i-check mo yung mga documentary requirements. But, all, ang magpipirma niyan yung Rio. Yan si Rio yung Registration Information Officer. Hanggang dyan na kayo sa signature, ha? <laughs> okay. And then, once uh, ma makita po yan, um, ang Rio po is um, mag-check sa completeness ng mga requirements mo. Nabigay mo na yun, no? with the application form. Tapos, later on, i-verify niyan sa Bolt kung intact ba yung titles o hindi, no? Tapos, mag-prepare dyan sila ng Rio assessment form. Tapos, to determine the registrations to be, registration fee to be paid, no? Alright, so, uh, yun ang procedure, no? Sa workflow nila. Uh, si Rio. Yan, si Rio. Registration information officer. So, check. Kompleto requirements. Meron ng sarap. Yun yung portion doon. I-check, check, check niya. Yan. And then, i-verify niya. Sa bolt, tingnan niya. Intact ba ito? Kung mga manual title pa. Of course, pag hindi, uh, i-title na, doon na nasa system, si check yan. 
And then, uh, Rio assessment form kung kailangan po para malaman po kung magkano ang registration fees na babayaran. And kapag kompleto na po ito, ito turn over na ito sa entry clerk. Ayan, entry clerk. And ang trabaho ng entry clerk, of course, uh, mag-generate yan siya ng tawag na EPEB, yung Electronic Primary Entry Book. Kasi, ay tech na nga tayo ngayon, uh, Electronic Primary Entry Book. Dati kasi noon, Primary Entry Book lang no, sa batas. Dahil electronic, naging EPEB. Dati PEB lang yan. Okay. And, pag, kompleto yan ha, isasabit ka. Otherwise, kasi kung kulang, isa sa uli yung papeles. At kung li- kumpletuhin mo. Pag nakarating na sa entry clerk, ibig sabihin, nakapasa ka na sa Rio, kompleto ng documents mo. That is the time now, you would see uh, that uh, it will now work, no? And move na within the time frame allowed under the law. Okay. So, ang entry clerk, of course, mag-antay ka muna, no? Hindi ka naman automatic pag naibigay ng Rio doon sa entry clerk, ikaw na kaagad. Meron man tayo queuing number. Nakalista, bibigyan ka ng number niya ng Rio, eh. Tay ka lang dyan, kay tawagin ka ng entry clerk. So, tatawagin ka, no? At sabi ng entry clerk, uh, i-enter niya nga yung transaction sa APEB, nagkakaroon ngayon or mag-generate ng tiyatawag nating EPEB number, no? At mag-generate na ng fees na babayaran mo. Ayan. Bakit mag-generate? Kasi galing sa system lang yan, eh. Ang computer man ang magkocompute yan, lalabas po magkano babayaran mo. Okay? So, magkakaroon ka ng EPEB number at mag-generate po ng babayaran mo, no? Now, uh, take note that in this uh, EPEB, doon makikita yung mga informations, no? Like yung presenter's name, address, contact, valid ID, transaction type, tsaka yung mga title reference, notarial information ng mga parties. And then, after that, yung entry clerk, yung gagawin niya, pag maka-generate niya siya, magpiprint niya siya ng yatawag na uh, payment form, no? Parang title preview notice, no? And it takes them one hour to do that, daw. Okay. So, print this uh, payment uh, uh, form and the title preview notice. Okay. Now, pag meron na po yan, i-carefully review po natin yung title preview notice, ha, para uh, kung sakto ba ang pangalan at documents, para at that stage pa lang, ma-change na, no? Hindi na yung pag na-print na mapasok na si system. Kasi pag meron pong i data, pwede natin sabihan yung entry clerk na if necessary, correct, mali ang data na nalagay mo. Instead na Raymond, o oh, ako, y- naging you. Oh, ganun na na type, no? Tapos ang bato ko naging BATO, di ba? So, pwede mong ma- ma-change, no? Kasi mahirap na later on, hindi, hindi ma-change, no? On that point. Okay, so here, para sa fill up ng rough daw, bibigyan ka ng 5 minutes. Tapos ang Rio, no, to check, verify, ba, isang oras per transaction, ha? And sa entry clerk, 1 hour daw. Depends on the title entered. Kung isang title, 1 hour. Sabihin niya ng mga time frame na hinihingi nila. So, with that, gumugul ka na ng 2 hours and 5 minutes sa uh, first instance pa lang ng pagpapasok pa lang ng document doon sa Registry of Deeds. Okay, let's proceed. 2 hours and 5 minutes. Ha? Proceeding with the workflow. Ano ba ang next mangyayari? Siyempre, pag may tawag ka na at may beginning assessment form and payment order, yung AFPO, tsaka TPN, Title Preview Notice, eh, punta ka na doon sa cashier. Bayad ka na, no? Tatawagin yung queuing number mo and i-accept yung payment mo and i-issuehan ka ng official receipt, no? Now, pag mabigyan ka na po ng official receipt, huwag po muna kayong umalis kasi bibigyan ka na naman ng another number dahil tatawagin ka para uh, magbayad and then later on to proceed with the scheduler. Meron pong, yes, meron pong tayong scheduler. Taga-schedule po, no? So, yan. Pag once yan, i-accept niya ang payment and then mag-issue sa official receipt, isasubmit niya sa scheduler. Tatawagin ka ngayon. Ngayon, ang scheduler, i advise ka ngayon kung ang pag-release ng transaction at ilalagay po yan sa access, acceptance, assessment form and payment order at ilalagay doon ang kailan marirelease ang ang title sa iyo. Yan. Kaya nga may scheduler, no? 
siya ang mag-schedule. No? Sabihin niya, okay, bumalik ka dito sa date na ito. Okay? And of course tayo, tapos na ang trabaho natin, nabigay na natin, nakuha na natin yung schedule. And here, cashier, 5 minutes. And scheduler, 5 minutes. So, all in all, ang nagugul po natin ng time is 2 hours and 15 minutes. Kasali na po yung kanina. Okay? Then, alis na po tayo. So, meron na tayo po doon yung sa IPB at nakalagay po doon kung kailan tayo babalik. Now, take note that the charter says they should be placed there kung kailan ka babalik. Karamihan po na na-experience ko doon sa piece of paper, ang, ang nangyayari is that hindi po nakalagay kung kailan babalik. Kundi nakalagay, tatawagan ka lang. Tatawagan ka lang namin. Yun ang nakalagay. Lagay mo yung text number, the text ka lang namin. Huwag kayo magpayag nun. You demand for a schedule because their chapter says you must be given a date to come back. Okay? So take note of that, ha? That is a loophole there that sometimes they do. Hindi nalagyan ng date but sabi nila, te-text ka lang nito. Tapos follow up us on this number. I-text nyo rin kami. No, don't do that. Because under the law, they are required to to have this schedule given to you when to come back. Okay. So, si scheduler po, hindi po yan mag-end ang trabaho niya dyan, no? So, next niya gagawin is that ipo-forward niya yung documents to the both section, no? For retrieval of the original copy. Kapag, of course, yung manual pa ang document, no? Pero kung, kung e-title na siya, ay ibang proseso. So, kung manual po, punta siya sa bolt keeper, no? At, of course, ang bolt keeper, anong gagawin? I-retrieve lang man yung title, no? Yan ang mahirap dyan kasi kapag uh, hindi manual title pa, meron sa bolt nila minsan matagal talaga because it will take time to look for it ba. Tamali ka pa. And then after that, uh, pag retrieve na po ng bolt keeper po, isasubmit na ito sa records officer para i-verify lang naman eh. Uh, tingnan kung ang owner's copy and ROD copy are the same. Now kapag okay, the same ang contents nila nung Kasi ba kambal siya, yung owner's copy at saka yung ROD copy na sa uh, title retrieval? Iko-compare lang yung dalawa kung sakto ba tama. Okay. So after that, if it has been compared, isasubmit na ito ngayon sa encoder ng records officer. Pero kung i-title ka, ang lamang dyan is that uh, from the scheduler, uh, diretso na po yan sa encoder, who will encode no? this... Uh, transaction. Yan lang po ang trabaho, no? So, ilan po kung sakaling manual title at dun tatidaan sa bolt keeper, ba? Dalawang araw po ang binihinihingi nila. Kaya nga, sabi ko, mas maganda kung e-title dahil hindi na tayo mag ng two working days. And two working days din ang records officer. Tapos si encoder para mag-encode three working days. So, how many is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, seven days. Seven working days, hindi yan one week. Ha? Seven working days yan. So, bawala mo yung two working days sa bolt keeper and records officer kung i-title ang titulo mo. Minus four ka agad yan. Alright? So, after that has been encoded, the next step is that magtatrabaho na yan is yung si examiner. Eh? Of course, kung manual title, ang examiner, hahanapin mo na yung owner's duplicate copy of the title and ROD and check niya. Pero kung e-title ito, i-examine lang niya yung owner's duplicate copy doon sa file against the file in their database. Okay. Examine. I-evaluate nila ang document. Number one, evaluation. Examination, evaluation, all the documents and determine the correctness of the document. Okay. And then, i-determine nila ang sufficiency. Kung sufficient ba yung payment? Tama ba yung babinayaran mo? Okay. And then, i-review and determine uh, yung lahat po ng mga naka-encumber doon or yung mga carryover transactions, dapat na carryover ba? Okay? Like kung meron yung uh, carryover ba yung Rule 74 kung nandun pa yung two period or nandyan pa ba yung may nakaprenda siya, dapat na carryover. Make sure po na carryover po yun. And then, i-evaluate niya and determine ang registrability. Ito na yung power nila, no? Um, assistant kasi sila na registry of deeds. Kung registrable ba yung document mo, hindi. Kaya, pag makita nilang hindi registrable, they could recommend that it would be 
uh, to the Registry of Deeds to deny it. No? So, our examiner shall check and proofread all the encoded data and ensure that the output or the new title to be generated is accurate based on the document submitted. So, makita po ninyo, pag magkamali pa rin sila, ang dami pong dinaanan na stages yan. Eh, meron talagang hindi nagtrabaho na mabuti kasi from the entry clerk up to papunta sa examiner, tinitingnan yung accuracy eh. kung sakto ba yung data na na-encode doon by the encoder. Okay? And then, next step is kung makita niya, pwede niya i-check and proofread niya. Sabi natin, and then, i-recommend for approval or denial. Saan po niya? Uh, i-recommend doon po sa registry, uh, sa registry of deeds. No? And then, sa register of deeds. Now, ang tawag po sa registry of deeds natin is approver. Okay, approver po ang term na, pero register of deeds. Now, registry of deeds po is yung office. Register of deeds, yan po yung tao. Iba po yan sila ha, registry and register of deeds. Okay, so ang trabaho lang ng register of deeds, simple lang. Approve or deny. Ganyan na ang trabaho niyan. Wala nang iba. And sila po yung, uh, sa sakit ng system, sila yung maka-generate. No? Sila lang po yung merong right na kung i-approve nila. At uh, meron silang maka-generate sila a new title number. Sila lang po yung makakuha ng new title number po. Then, once ma-generate ng new title number, uh, i-indicate po niya yun sa new generated title. Siya po maglalagay ng title number din. Ipapasok po niya doon sa new generated title number on the main document subject of the registration. Now, kung denied naman, eh, sabihin din niya yung grounds for denial. Diba sinabi sa inyo para taos your right to in consulta. Okay, yan po yung rule. So, how many days po? No, how many days? Well, three working days. Tapos examiner, three working days also. Alright? So, take note of that. So, from the registry of deeds, so, yan ah. Uh, next step, no? ibibigay na niya yan sa uploading clerk. Kaya nga, pag magsabi nyo, oh, uploading na tayo. Uh, nasa uploading clerk na tayo. Kasi uploading clerk here, uh, gagawin niya is, uh, of course, uh, check. And second, i-scan niya. And i-upload and converted for digital storage. Ipapasok po yan. I-upload nila yan dyan. Kaya nga, uh, para lang yung sort of saying na para nag-in-scan tapos pinasok sa system. So, nandun na yun. Uploaded na siya. With the title number and everything, all the terms. Hindi na mabawa yan ha. Pag napasok na, na-upload na. So, uploading na, ibig sabihin, antay na lang natin maglabas. How many days? Two working days po. Ang sabi dito. And then, after that, uh, next step is doon na tayo sa pinaka-importante is sa printing clerk. Okay. Yan ang pinapag na printing na tayo. So, piniprint na kayo para malapit na mapirmahan. Okay. And of course, uh, kung approved transaction po, ang printing clerk, oh, mag-print na siya ng new generated title. Take note that wala pa po itong pirma. Ha? Okay. You'll notice here, wala pang pirma yan ng registry of deeds natin. Okay, and after that, yung uh, document na pinanggalingan, i-cancel po yun. Tataka ng cancel ng printing clerk. Okay, pero kung denied po ang transaction, yan na, magpiprint siya ng notice of denial and that notice of denial will be signed by the, submitted later on to the uh, register of deeds for signature. Ilang days po ang printing clerk? Tatlong araw po para mag-print. Now, the registrar of deeds, once it is submitted to him, okay, yan na, yan ang mga tituloy, submitted sa kanya, and he will affix his signature. Pag notice of denial din po, eh, kailangan din po niyang pirmahan. Okay, approved man. Yung isa naman, denied, pirmahan din niya, na denied. Ganon lang. Now, after that, uh, yan ang pinaka maganda, no? Kasi one working day daw niya gawin, siguro marami siyang pirmahan. So, during the time that you are told by the scheduler to come back, no? punta ka na at doon ka sa releasing clerk magpunta and get your title po. Okay? 
So, ayun na. Nang title mo, gaano kami katagal no, no? So, sa workflow po nila, na registry of deeds, no? Ang steps nila constitutes 19 days and 2 hours and 35 minutes. Ba, mas bababa sa Artalo kasi Artalo is 20 days. Eh. Sa kanila is 19 days, 2 hours and 35 minutes for subsequent registration. Wow. So, tell me guys kung do you experience that 19 working days, 2 hours and 35 minutes. Alright, so with that, I am through with my discussion and now I'm going to turn it over to Sir Bong and yes. yeah, yes or no? <laughs> you have any question? Do you have any question? Uh, Ma'am, para, question. Go ahead. Uh, sir. Yes. Si Kay Attorney, but I'm so amazed with the ano, presentation. Pala. Kasi na, sir. Yes, but. Pa kayo ng ano, ha? I'm so sad kasi nakakabad yung ex-badded fee pa yun. Mm -hmm. sasab sasabihin nila sa amin na it will take about a month or more than a month daw. Tapos kung gusto mo daw mag ano. Alam mo yung mga siguro yung mga liaison officer yung ito sa sa amin. Kasi now that I know, oh my God, I was so amazed kanina. Yes. Thank you. Welcome po. Welcome ma'am. Actually, ang uh, aking point kasi, I think it's time for us to, you know, to... To stand ba and know our rights ba? Ako, that is yes. what I'm doing right now. I am writing them. Where is it? You know, if, for example, yung 19 days, 2 hours and 35 minutes, let's say, magdagdagan ng another 7 working days, okay lang po ako. Okay lang ako. Maintindihan ko yan. Kasi tao lang eh. Maraming trabaho. Pero pag umabot na ng 6 months yan, 3 months, parang something is wrong. So, I will write them a letter and call their attention and cite the artalo. <laughs> the fastest daw is about three months. Sabi ko, grabe nyo, ang tagal na. Grabe nyo, ang yun. Huh? Kasi wala, 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 hindi ko alam eh. I don't, I don't know na gano'n pa. Kasi hindi ako kinapilis. Yeah. Kasi hindi na ako ano kayo. Actually, I'm a real estate fraud kasi a victim ako ng ano, ng real estate fraud. Oh, Kaya sabi ko, ah, lagi, lagi ako nabibiktim, lagi kami nabibiktim. <laughs> Pero ngayon, hindi na siguro, at least na ano na. Alam niyo na yung rights niyo, especially pag naging uh, licensed broker na kayo, di ba? Yes. Mali pa rin nalalaman. Tsaka huwag tayo mamihasa na, na palaging na, naiisahan ba yung pag-iisahan. Ganun, ba't magaling? Imagine sir, sir Bong at saka attorney, sorry ah. Uh, okay. uh, late lang kasi nabinta, hindi naman late yung mga siguro 2 years ago, nabintahan din si ng mami ko at saka yung, yung brother-in-law ng ano, ng park. Park dito sa subdivision namin ah. Uh -uh. Park? Dito sa Indigo City. <laughs> yeah. Actually, wow. park. Park ang nabili namin. Tapos sabi daw nila, eh, may transfer daw tapos association president daw siya and everything. <laughs> Alam mo yung gano'n? Tapos nung tingnan namin, <laughs> Mayroon, park pa lang. Mayroon nagbabas noon. My God, grabe. Tapos hanggang ngayon, tapos hindi ko alam na way back 30 years ago, nilipat-tipat pa na yan talaga. Grabe, galit na galit ako. <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> sir, siguro <laughs> mga apat, imang buyer. Parang so, hindi ko alam. Had I known earlier na park pala yun. Kaya bago lang namin alaman, hindi talaga may lipas nga. Hanap na naman siya ng buyer. And then ganito, ganito. Kaya sabi ko, grabe. Kaya na na-motivate na talaga kami at talaga kailangan mag-aral talaga kami ng ganito. Yes. Para, yes. Ano, niya, baka mamaya luneta ang binibenta sa inyo ha. Hindi, hindi ito lang. Hindi ba siya sa likod lang ng bahay namin, biktima kami, no? Oh, <laughs> talaga. But anyway, thank you sir. Thank you. Sana, thank you. sir, sana Michelle, sila. Michelle, question? Michelle De Jesus, go ahead. Yes, um, yes po. I just want to share yung sa comment na lang on the tracking of LR, uh, and LRA. Meron kasi silang online tracking. So yes. uh, there was a time I had the mortgage on our property removed. Yung sinabi nilang come back on this date, mas mahaba kesa doon sa nakita ko sa tracking. So I asked my messenger to go there earlier. Tapos nakipag-argue pa siya kasi sinabi nga daw ng taga ano, register of deeds na go back on this date. Eh, sinabi ko na sa tracking naman, may EPEB numbers. It really helps na ano online and um, e-registration na si registrar of deeds. So, 
we mas can chat easily. I can share in the me. ano nasa is share ko sa chat yung tracking nila kasi it's really helpful. Yes, go, go. Yes. Share mo mommy share. That's, That's true. true. Yes, po. That's true. Uh, yung yung tracking nila is very important. Then um uh, yun nga pag meron nga nakalagay doon, then you have to go there. And pag hindi, sometimes alam mo yung nasa frontliners, yun ang mahirap kausapin and I do not really want to to you know to to argue with them so ang ginagawa ko ay is, is i call the attention screenshot of the head. <laughs> screenshot ng tracking sir oh, pinapa no, ano pina, <laughs> pinapadala ko ay ako Michelle ang ginagawa ko is pag hindi padala ka agad ako ng sulat sa doon sa register of this not only it's not because me ha? even uh, even not a lawyer <coughs> can do that no Kasi attention lang. Kasi meron kasi tayong batas sa iyong artalo eh. You have to follow that. By the way, uh, segue ako, Michelle, no? Uh, kanina, I have an, um, a meeting, an appointment with the city treasurer of Davao City. So, you're able to talk. Sabi ko, nirisk ko yung concern natin on the tax on transfer of real property na 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 may penalty ko sakaling matagal na may penalty ba yeah. compromise meron ba kayong ganon kung donation and everything sabi ko meron ba kasing Department of Finance na na resolution ni Secretary Dominguez noon pinafollow niyo ba sabi niya alam mo uh, sir at panyero hindi ko namin mapalo yan bakit man although ang uh, bakit? yung City Treasurer's Office is under the Department of Finance there must be a local ordinance to be enacted in order to exempt or to to parang pagkaroon ng amnesty on the trucks on transfer of real property. Wala pa po sa buong Pilipinas na gawa ng ganyang ordinansya. That's why they will have to bear the burden of paying the uh, penalties daw. Sabi mm-hmm. niya. So it should have been that merong, meron talagang uh, ordinansya. No? So Tama din, nakita ko ka because the estate tax amnesty, national law, was made by Congress. no? There's a law. Now, kung local naman, dapat then meron ding law through an ordinance then by the local uh, uh, lawmakers there. So, yeah, I, I get the point and I actually understood na ganun nga. So, yun din so for parang, sure, hindi po sila magagawa nun kasi that's lost revenues on their part. <laughs> or, or wala lang talagang alam din na pwedeng i-push yun. Kasi alam mo, kung a counselor, if you are listening here and watching us right now, um, well, if they would know that, pa dagdag boto yun ha, kasi sikat sila nun if yeah. they will be able to have a, to pass that bill or that sa kanilang uh, committee and will be approved, di ba? Magkakaroon sila ng yeah. donation. It, uh, or, or yung amnesty for that purpose. So, hindi ba sure, this, Happy yun. Believe sila mga tao, no? Oh. Now, yung DOF po na Department of Finance na resolution na sinasabi doon, yun pala, Michelle, is just to urge the local government units to at least come up with the same guidelines with this estate tax amnesty. Pwede ba? Please, pwede kami. <laughs> Pero wala. Uh-huh. Hindi. Kailangan daw ng ordinansya. So so even if mag magwrite sa DOF or sa BLGF pwede pa din silang hindi mag-follow kasi hindi man, ganun. Oh, hindi man covered ang local ng Department of Finance may sarili man tayong governance BLGF local. sila 'di ba po BL, oh. parang parang BLGF ata sila something Yes but uh, we are we have our own local governance kasi So Mm-mm. with that kailangan daw talaga ng ng ano ng ordinance for that particular amnesty in line okay. with the ano in line with the with the estate tax amnesty para maganda okay, so, so yung assumption po is 36 months interest if matagal na yung ano estate na hindi na settle kasi parang yun yung maximum ata yes, yung okay. interest is 2% times 60, 36 months plus the 25% surcharge pa <laughs> Yan lang ang point yan. Okay. Yeah. Medyo ma- madugo. <laughs> okay, Ma'am Tina. Okay, have... thank you po. Uh, Ma'am Tina, you have a question? Tina Marcos, go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Attorney. Yes, yes. Ma'am. Um, Question ko lang. Um, not sure if this was asked before, but regarding dun sa Register of Deeds, 
Was it like, um, the, is the website accessible nationally or just local po ba? Natural. It can be accessed sa website. Nationally. Mm. Okay. Because my concern po kasi, attorney, is that have there been cases po like yung ginagawa ng, ginagawa ng fake titles? Okay. Continue. Tapos, um... Example, uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, if familiar mo, di ba sa Times Beach, you, the, the Queensland? Mm. Yes. nag sila ng beach property. Yes. And unfortunately, parang we heard news that some of the properties that they reclaim is not actually theirs. Tapos ginawa lang ng title. But since small, kumbaga small property or small owners lang yung nandoon, so parang wala silang laban. Actually, yung... Kasi nakapag-produce, opo, nakapag-produce si, si Queens na ng title. Tapos meron din yung mga small property owners. Yeah. Ang, ang alam ko kasi yung Registry of Deeds na gumawa niyan, uh, na-convict na. And imagine, Sir Bong, pati dagat na tituluhan, na. Ay! <laughs> Magaling! <laughs> <laughs> Magaling na register of deeds. Talaga nga rin. Hindi, it's not a fake title. <laughs> kasi daga. totoo ang title, hindi peke. Kaya lang, uh, dagat. <laughs> dagat eh. Totoo, wala may ari. Kawawa oh, yan sila. Oh. Da, da, natanggal na sa trabaho, dato convict na rin yun. Convict na lang. Oh, I will not just uh, mention okay. the name. Thank you very much, Ang Tina. Hmm. Tina, I'm, ba- I'm sorry, sir, Bob. Just, just to clarify, in that case, because nga na-convict yung, um, yung gumawa ng title, will the property go back to the uh, previous owner or to the original owner? Uh, no, but as long as the... Kasi the source cannot rise higher than the spring. No? So kung ang... ang kung peke yung title because hindi yun siya... Tama pagkagawa. Then therefore, it will revert to saan siya nagsimula. Ganun dapat. Babalik, babalik. Siya. Babalik. But uh, nevertheless, babalik. ang problema kasi, to say that a particular title is void because uh, it was not made in the way it should have been done and there is uh, irregularity in doing it, there must be a court order to declare it as such as void. Hindi kasi pwedeng Sabihin natin na void yan. Kailangan po i-prove natin sa court na void yan siya. So once there is a court order na na void yan siya, ineffectual, invalid, it will be cancelled. At ano yung previous title na valid, di restore doon sa title na yun. Yan ang mangyayari dyan. So balik siya sa mm. dating time. Okay, thank you very much. Again, uh, Ma'am Daisy. Thank you, attorney. Yeah. Thank you po. Uh, uh, Timbo, go ahead. Timba. Oh, yes, hello. Good evening, Hi. attorney Batu. Hello, uh, Sir Bong, good evening. This question po pertains on the topic on encroachment. Kanina, attorney. Go ahead. Uh, between two titled properties where each property owner conducted their individual survey or relocation survey, and thereafter, uh, uh, found out that there is indeed an encroachment on one property, but later proposed by the GEs, each GEs, to conduct a joint survey. But then again, the landowner refused to have a joint relocation survey. What are the recourse or legal recourses for available to the aggrieved party? And if so, Kung legal remedies, what are the periods or prescriptive periods for availing those remedies currently? Well, actually, ang, ang rule is simple. No? Uh, if there is an encroachment, then boss maganda sana kung pag-usapan. No? And kung hindi nga, hindi na nagpa-participate yung isang owner because nalaman na niya kasi na, na probably kung mag-joint relocation survey, mabibisto rin lang talaga na talagang mali ang kanyang uh, siya ang naka-encroach. So, ang next step would be to go to the barangay to in order to pass through the barangay conciliation proceedings and get a certificate to file action in court and go to court no for that encroachment no. And kung gaano katagal pag file ng case for encroachment um well that would depend upon the court no and depende po sa postponement but with the rules now na bawal na siging pa postpone 
and paspas na po, no? wala na extensions and everything. Medyo mabilis po ang, kung nasusunod talaga ng korte, eh, dito sa amin sa Double City, nasusunod talaga ang bilis ng decision making ngayon dito ng mga judges namin. And then, kung sabihin mo ang prescriptive period, wala po prescription because yun nga maganda ang protection, ba diba? sabi ko. Imprescriptible po ang titulo. Kapag you could always ask that kahit gaano katagal, any body that intrudes your property by way of encroachment everything it will never prescribe yun ang maganda na protection ng title under the torrent system of land registration sabi sabi may forever yes may forever ang title ha oh. attorney may forever ang title <laughs> Sir, uh, attorney may follow up question lang go ahead go ahead uh-huh. kung merong pre- existing perimeter fence to on Uh, on the side of the adjoining property na naka while the other side does not have fence, can the property owner of the, or the agri- property owner fence the portion which has to uh, dispute? Okay lang na mag, uh, siya develop, mag-improve doon. Uh, assuming na may contemplation siya of filing an action against the other property. Kasi kung magtayo, okay lang, kasi kung magtayo siya ng perimeter fence niya, sarili niya, then, kung baga, ah. technically speaking, he is going to get the perimeter fence of the opposing party, right? Mapapasok sa loob uh, Not niya. necessarily, sir. Hindi po. Uh, that is beyond po, outside the ano, disputed area. Ah, outside the, kung outside the disputed area, wala namang mag-stop sa'yo if you want to fence it, no? Uh, wala mga problema because uh, it is outside but remember when you fence always remember to get a fence permit because uh, one of yes. the requirements of uh, getting a fence permit is a barangay certification and second is uh, yung survey nga ng survey ng, survey. ng genetic engineer para makapagtayo tayo ng fence Okay. Even uh, if an ordinary fence, sir, hindi concrete fence attorney, hindi pwede kung may in-dispute yung yes. ano, no? Actually, yung... technically, when it comes to fence, something that you want to enclose your property, that's still considered as fence under the definition. Okay. Thank you, attorney. Kaya yung iba, pag ayaw kumuha ng fence, ang ginagawa nila, tinatanimian lang na Madrid Kakao. <laughs> Totoo yan! Ah, ngayon, ganun pa rin. Oo, oh, ganun na ginagawa para hindi magdaan ng fence permit, para hindi magdaan ng hassle. Yun, Madrid at Kakao. At least meron silang guide. Mm, yung, may guide sila. sila. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Huwag gani, sir. Huwag gani. Tanim nyo. Attorney, may, pwede magtanong din po. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sin- uh, what's that? Carlo po. Carlo, go ahead, Carlo. Ikaw muna. Sir, para alim- alimbawa, sir, nagkaroon ng bentahan ng property. Tapos, later, ah, uh, diyala siya sa court, tapos napatanayan na yung sale is invalid, tapos nagkaroon ng finality of judgment na i-cancel lahat ng tax declaration sa property na to, i-revert sa dating may-ari. Pero yung tax declaration kasi, sir, is na-subdivide na sa ibang may-ari, pati yung title. Paano yung ganun, sir? Okay, meron tayong rule, no? Now, for example, if it is void, no, if it is, if a property is void, And any and all transactions after that will always be void. Depende kasi kung anong klaseng declaration of nullity na in order ng judge, bakit naging void yun. So, any and all actions, whether you subdivide and everything, hindi po pwedeng gawin. Magre-revert back ta rin, maapektahan yung... Dapat mapit. Kaya nga, pag mag-file ng case, dapat yung may mga co-owners doon or na-subdivide na, dapat gi implied sila as necessary parties. May rule kasi tayo na necessary parties that they should be joined no as party defendant in this case so that they could also answer back. Paano yung attorney, halimbawa, hindi sila naging party pero nakatanggap ako ng notice to comply na i-cancel na yung tax declaration in, sa present owner para i-revert sa dati. Yung mga... product ng ano sir subdivision ikakancel ko din ba hindi ganito yan sir i could not uh, I, I, as unless i could get all the details and facts no uh, i would refuse to comment on that kasi kung hindi ka party sa generally if you're not a party to a case you cannot be ordered to comply on something 
'di ba? Hindi ka naman government office to orderan eh. So you're a private party, no? So you will Kasi yeah, ako, sir, kasi assistant assessor ako. Okay. Kasi nang na-receive ko sa court na ibat pang i-cancel yung toxic na you have to you have to you have to follow it, sir. If you're a government official, you have to follow it. Because that is a court order. Otherwise, you'll be cited in contempt. Pero yung naging case ko nga, sir, is wala na sa may-ari na pinapakancel nila yung uh, toxic declaration na subdivide niya sa iba yung may-ari, sir, na ibenta na lang dati. Then you need to get a you need to get a clarification from the court through the sheriff. Ah, okay, Kasi like, ang nag-execute eh, then you have to write them na uh, how would I proceed with this na, na, na transfer na sa ibang mga may-ari. So that you will need some oh. guidance ba? Kasi mahirap din yung tama. No? I got your point now. Because you are from the local uh, assistant. Local uh, government, oh, yeah. you, uh, you have to comply. Otherwise, ma- matitikiyo tayo niyan. So you have to get na uh, need to write the court and need guidance on how to 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 execute the judgment considering that this had already been transferred. No? Patulong po tayo oh. sa korte na niyan. Okay. 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 I, I, sorry sir, I was thinking kasi kanina private ka na ikaw yung isa sa mga owners na nasubdivide na. Okay, I did not know na ikaw pala yung yung ano yung, yung officer. <laughs> ikaw pala yung uh, inutusan. Angela, you have questions? Angela Las Banyas, go ahead. Last question na ito, no? Angela? Good evening, uh, good evening po sir. Uh, go ahead. Uh, my, my question is, regarding to the annotation of deed of sale to a mother title. So, yung kanina na ang requirements of annotations, kailangan may e-car and then yung amount and yung area. If ever po na nagkaroon ng annotation without this, the e-car, the amount and the area, not included in the annotation, ano po ang magiging significance dito? You're saying, ma'am, that the deed of sale was annotated on the title? Uh, from a mother title. Yes, the mother title, may na-annotate doon sa mother title na deed of sale sa likod? Wala. Uh, ano po ibig niyo sabihin, ma'am? And what's your question? So, ang, ang question ko pa doon, di ba pag deed of sale na, kailangan nakalagay sa annotation yung e-car. Yes, ma'am. Pero kung wala yun, hindi na ilagay ng LRA. Hindi man ang Paano LRA yun? ang mag-annotate uh, nun, ang BIR man, ang maglalagay Ayaw, sa yung, yung registering ko. Oh. Ang BIR? Then ipa... Meron po yan, ma'am. Imposible yung pong wala. Meron po yan siya. Hindi, paano kung ano, wala nga po sa... Ay, balik, balik, po kayo sa, na... balik po kayo sa BIR at palagyan niyo po yung dorsal portion ng, ng stamp ng BIR na may e-car na yun. Oh, siguro kasi wala pang e-car. Nagpa-title, nagpa-annotate na doon sa mother title. Hindi man ma-annotate ang deed of sale, ma'am, sa mother title, ma'am. I haven't seen a deed of sale being annotated on a title. Adverse claim siguro. Then attaching Ayaw nga adverse claim. Ay, naku naman si ma. <laughs> adverse claim a- attaching the deed of sale without yan ng e-car. Oh. So, okay. so pwedeng wala ng e-car doon sa oh, adverse course, claim. Of course, of course pwede yan. Okay po, thank yes, you. Ma'am. One question, the attorney. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Okay. Attorney. Thank you all. I uh, attorney